Today I'm very excited because I'm going to show you something that you've never seen before on television. Today we're going to start with a white canvas and we're going to use some magic black on it. So I'm going to let you see me cover the canvas. And this is magic black here. We'll just cover the entire canvas. No, we'll try to paint them for you or we'll, we'll surely find somebody who can. So on behalf of everybody here at the station, we'd like to wish each and every one of you happy painting. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome back to another Whiskey Review with me, the Whiskey Novice. Great to be here as always, great to have you. And uh, it's review number 46, part 6 of my series called The Baker's Dozen, looking at 13, 12 year old Scottish single malts and we move back to Isla with the Buna Haven 12 year old. Now, we'll get into this whiskey in a moment. Let's give you a few, uh, just a few facts and figures about it. It is owned by the Distel Group. It is the most northerly distillery on Isla. And this particular expression is matured, double matured in uh, X bourbon casks and X sherry casks. Bottled at 46, let me double check because I think, I have, yes, 46.3%. It is non-chill filtered. There is no color added. I'm going to jump on board with uh, my friend Vin PF and, and suggest, uh, I have to agree with him. He, I know this is, this is something that annoys him particularly, is dark bottles, particularly opaque bottles. Now this isn't too bad. You, you can't actually see how much is in this, but sometimes, and we will see later, sometimes you can't. And it, it does actually, it didn't just annoy me, but the more and more I'm seeing of them, the more it's actually starting to get to me, to me a little as well. With this thing that you can't see how much is left in the bottle. Very, very easy to kill a bottle without realizing you're that close to the end of it. This comes in, uh, I've seen prices coming in, usually 30, but it can be 30 pounds, but it can go up to 45 pounds. It's a very, very big swing in the price of this. Obviously these are UK prices as always. So let's get into it, shall we? There's an incredibly thick syrupy oily nose feel on this. I've mentioned nose feel before, it's not something that you generally tend to hear people talking more about mouth feel, but there is such a thing you will hear some talking about nose feel and, and it's that thing where it just has a feel of something. You can generally get a feel for whether it's a thick whiskey or a thin whiskey on the nose without having to go into the palate. And this is a very, very thick nose feel for me. It's fruity, it's floral. It's sticky, it's sweet, it's strange that it, 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 you're naming, almost naming feelings with this whiskey rather than notes in their own individual right. As I said, sweet, sticky, fruity, floral, jam-like, if that makes sense. It is almost thick, jammy golden syrup. There's a, a light brininess in here. Now it has been suggested, I've read it, I've heard other reviewers say it, that they get a, a slight smokiness on the back of this. I struggle to find a smokiness in this on the nose. Maybe it's there, maybe I'm missing it. This is a whiskey that I would suggest that if you want to dip your toe in Isla, but you don't like peanut whiskey, try this or maybe the the, uh, the the brook laddie classic laddie something like that where you're not getting a big peat influence you're not getting as i said i don't find any smokiness in the nose of this i find the influence of those sherry casks that's starting to come through now don't get smoke but yeah the sherry's starting to come through at the back now those let's say sherry mixed peel dried fruits, raisins, etc. 
currents very it's it's you're not overwhelmed by that thick jam like nose but it's it's just got oomph this whiskey it's got body it's as i said bottled of 46.3 percent it's not that that abv isn't really hitting you a slap in the face but you just know that there's it's it's bottled at a good percentage end of the palette Very nice, sweet and sour delivery. Washes very, very well over the tongue. Coats the tongue, but it's actually, I find it actually slightly lighter on the palate than the nose would suggest. It's thick, but just not as thick as that nose would suggest. Those sherry notes become quite prominent. Still nice and sweet, but rich. Dried fruit. Syrup, golden syrup. Even ginger. But not, not fresh, crystallized ginger. Yeah. It's thick, as I said. Not as thick as the nose would suggest, but it's slightly waxy, slightly. I've heard that I've heard that term come up an awful lot more recently. There seems to be more and more whiskies having this waxy feel about them. What I would suggest, if you if you're not quite sure what what I mean by waxy feeling, is it it just it really coats, but it's a. I'm not suggesting you go out and start licking candles, but it just it coats. But it's a strange coating. It's not an oily coating. It's more of a waxy coating. Very, very good bold palette to go along with a very, very good bold nose finish. Long, slow. Peppery, but slightly. I'd say there's even, we even get that that ginger again, and, and even a slight cinnamon, a very very slight cinnamon thing there. I'm actually going to add a touch of water. I, I, as always, I did so in my when taking my tasting notes, and it, it, it accepts water very well. It does take the water. Uh, very approachable this is unique is the way I would describe this whiskey there's not not an awful lot out there that I've had which are in the same place as this I'm not saying that this is just this big individual thing that you'll not get anywhere else apart from from Buna having itself Finding this one a bit hard to explain, it's just unique. I don't have that many in my cabinet that play the same as this. If that explains it, maybe not. Yeah. Oh yeah. The water really opens that up. I, I know on the nose. Yeah, the sherry notes become more bold with the addition of the water. The palate becomes ever so slightly more delicate, but the sweetness and the richness and all are still there. And now, after some time, with the addition of the water, there is a smokiness in the palate. Very, very light. Comes late in the game. The finish. Remains long, remains peppery. Slight bitterness in the very end, but it's a, it's a nutty, it's almost like walnut. It's a walnut bitterness. So there's a nuttiness in the very end of the finish. 
and it's like walnut that, that gives you that very, very slight bitterness. But oh, ever so slight. Very, very nice. Yeah, very nice. I'm going to compare it. Now, as I said a moment ago, I said a couple of things in this video. One, this is quite unique. So comparing it, even finding a bottle in my cabinet to, to say, right, well, here's something that I want to compare it with, was a bit of a struggle for me. So I don't know how this comparison is going to go. Uh, I'll show you what it is. Two, getting on to opaque bottles. Cutty Sark, the Prohibition Edition, bottled at 50%. Want to get a couple of things out of the way here. This is actually a component of this. We're going to have and goes into this blend. So this was sort of why I pulled this out. Yet again, I haven't tried this. So I'm sort of in my head thinking, yeah, this might be in here somewhere. Now, the reason I do these comparisons, the re this isn't necessarily a comparison. What I'm doing here, and this is just a little info for you. It's more to offer you an alternative. This might not be available where you are. This might be ridiculously expensive where you are. Whereas this might be readily available and inexpensive. Maybe not. But I do tend, when I'm doing my comparisons, what I'm trying to do, give you an alternative and a cheaper alternative. As I said, this runs 30 to the £45 mark. Buna Haven 12 here still runs pretty expensive for a 12-year-old. Yes, it's bought at 46.3%. Unchill filtered, no colour added. It's a bit of quality. So, fair enough. I can see where the money's at in it. This, I found, I think I paid £21 for this. This is pretty ridiculously cheap for something that's, okay, it's a blend, but it's bottled at 50%. If you want, in my head, to find that same mouth feel nose feel experience as this on the cheap you may get it here bear with me and we'll see but i have a 12 year old yeah rich sweet fruity floral the sherry's there but incredibly well balanced not a big sherry bomb it's not Screaming, shouting sherry at you and saying that I'm only sherry. It's not screaming, shouting. I'm only bourbon. Very, very well balanced. Much creamier. This is much uh, creamier. More, much more vanilla and, and toffee. Note, an awful lot more toffee caramel notes. And this. I'm not reviewing this here again. I like this. <laughs> I'm totally honest with you. I, I, I really, really, not being cheeky when I say this, you can like it or not, and I'm sure there'll be people who'll say, how could you like Cutty Sark Prohibition Edition? I love the nose in this. It's just so creamy and caramel, and that ball to 50%, there's enough to carry it through. This is the first I've had this for ages. Don't ask me how much is in it, because I cannot tell. Completely opaque ball. Vin, you are justified. I totally agree with you. Right, sorry, I completely forgot what this was like. Yes, incredibly well balanced. Incredibly toffee, caramel, creamy. Mm, you know, on the palate, there ain't a massive thing. Yes, it's different. Of course it's different. But you would know this is in here. This, there's, there's definitely there. It's got that rich. It's that rich texture. Mouthfeel, slightly waxy, beautifully coating thing. Very, very much in here. I don't know what proportion of this. I'm going to say this. It's not necessarily a 12-year-old expression that's going into this. I would imagine it's something younger. But 
just the fact that they put this out at 50%, there is a, a thinner version of, of the, the Cutty Sark. Mm. Yeah. You would definitely, there's a there's a sen same sensation, that mouthfeel, slightly waxiness, well coating. If I had come on at the start and said, this is, this is bogging, this is, this is no good. I would say there would probably be a red target appear on me somewhere. I would probably be lynched because from what I can tell, this is very well liked. It has, it just continues to pop up on social media etc and I've yet to hear a bad thing said about it I'm sure there are those out there who, who dislike it is it the best whiskey in the world of course it's not uh, to somebody it might be their best whiskey in the world it's great whiskey uh, you just can't you know I, I certainly wouldn't claim it's the best whiskey in the world just because it's a very very difficult thing that's that's a, a very personal thing but it certainly is great whiskey there's no denying that it's a box ticking exercise for the right reasons no there's no color added no they haven't chill filtered it they bottled it 46.3 percent in a, in a rather smashing looking little ball i feel and it just has goodness on it but yeah if you haven't bought one i would certainly recommend it and i would also recommend the cutty sark prohibition edition if you can get your hands on it. that's that that is gonna have a 12 year old wrapped up once again there we go so that's the end of this review i'm just going to uh, finish by saying as usual thank you very much for enjoying it if you enjoyed it thank you very much for being here thank you very much once again to my uh patreons patrons i i can't say enough i can't thank them enough their support is incredibly well appreciated and if you want to, to join that patreon group the details are below. I'll be back next week, as usual, with something else. And until then, here's to your good health. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.